time for game night. Getting you ready for Sacramento Kings basketball. He's got the bucket! Game night is presented by Power Business Technology, your locally owned and managed Toshiba copier dealer. Contact them at 844-POWER-BZ or visit them at powercopiers.com. Here's your host, Scott Marsh, alongside the high flyer, Henry Turner. And a very pleasant good afternoon to you. Welcome into game night right here. Sacktown Sports, 1140. Scott Marshall along with the high flyer, Henry Turner. Hope you're enjoying a beautiful weekend here in our capital city. Sun is out. It's starting to get a little bit warmer. It was a little cool this weekend, no doubt. But uh, right now it's pretty cool and pretty nice out there. And uh, obviously the Kings trying to right the ship after two losses on the East Coast. Back in New York. This time across the bridge in Brooklyn, they'll get ready to take on the Nets. Hi, Flyer. How are you on this Sunday afternoon? Oh, Scooter. I'm indifferent right now, bro. Okay. Still a little I, numb? I mean, you know, my optimism for this Sacramento Kings basketball team has changed. Yeah. It's changed to now being worried. Yep. I'm very worried about this basketball club, and I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. Number one, we've lost Monk. Yes. We've lost Herder. Yes two big parts of what we knew, what we do, and two big parts of our success. Yeah, no doubt. Keegan Murray is playing like a second-year player. Keegan Murray, he is who he is. Harrison Barnes is on vacation. He's here He's here two nights. He's not here. Mm -hmm. And we're asking De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis to play five, five on two and win basketball games. Yep. And at this point of the year, and, and, and you know, Scott, we've been doing this a long time. Yes, we, know. we have. For this point in the year, if you are a playoff squad and you're looking to make some postseason play, you're supposed to be playing your best brand of basketball right now. And I don't think the Kings are doing that. Well, the, the numbers would, would spell that out. You just look at the Western Conference, and obviously so many teams are playing great basketball right now. The Kings have lost two straights, we know, to start this road trip. They're five of their last ten. There are only one of two teams in the Western Conference that are going to be in the play-in or play-off that don't have records above 500 right now. And you know, and like I said, and my my biggest worry, this is my biggest worry, Scott, is that we're not seeing the best brand of Kings basketball. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm worried about right there. No, no doubt. And obviously, on Friday, it was another roller coaster ride uh, for Sacramento. Uh, the Celtics were without a couple of their starters too. No Jalen Brown, no Derek White. They put it to the Kings. They got a 19-point fourth quarter lead. They took everybody out. The Kings made a run. They made a miraculous uh, comeback. They get the bank three from Darren Fox, who goes off for 40, and you think somehow it's going to be the theft of the year. The Kings are going to steal one in Boston with right. the Celtics basically laying it out for them to take. Keegan Murray seemingly had the rebound. It got punched out of his hands. Mm -hmm. And there you see uh, Xavier Tillman with a runner in the lane. Seven seconds left. Darren Fox driving, fading away. Didn't get the shot. Keegan point blank range didn't go. And then Colby Jones gets smacked right in the face. On no a third call. attempt. Doesn't go. No call. And the Kings lose a heartbreaker 101 to 100. Boy, that hurt. It did. I mean, I mean, it, it it really hurts Scooter for the overall scheme of things for the Sacramento Kings. But once again, that game, did you feel like you saw the best brand of Kings basketball? No, absolutely not. And that's why I said it would have been absolutely the steal of right. the NBA season. Right. That's why I'm saying I'm worried. Yeah. Because, you know, a win, a loss, you have these in the NBA. It, yeah. it's, it's a part of the game. But – I really think that this team should be playing a lot better at this particular point of the year than what they're doing. Because, you know, we talk about how great the play-in is and what it does for the NBA and how it gives teams second chances. Well, I tell you what, if you're a basketball team that's not playing well and you're in the play-in, you're in bad shape. Because one bad game, and it's a wrap. You're done. You're going home. No doubt. It could easily be the Lakers or the Warriors, and that would be the worst of the worst. If you want to join us, we'll be here until 4 o'clock. Give us a call, 1-800-920-1149-163-391140. We're up and running in our YouTube. You can chat in there as well. 
feel free to check that out. And if you want to text us, you can always do that also. All right. So you throw it out there. The Kings aren't playing their best basketball right now. You mentioned the injuries is that, and you also of course mentioned Keegan and Harrison, you laid out a pretty good case of why they're not playing their best. Why, why do you think that's all coming right now? Just for the specific reasons you laid out, or is there anything more to it? No, I mean, I mean, Scooter, it, 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 it hasn't just been right now. Mm-hmm. They've been playing this way for a while. Okay. And they've been able to win basketball games, but they've lost mm-hmm. a lot of games that they should have won if they had been playing their best brand of ball. Now, the thing about it is that, you know, like I said, with, with this playing thing and the way that the Kings are playing, this is why I have been beating the drum far as saying, take care of your business and be in the top six. You know, in my mind, one and done is the worst thing that can possibly happen to an NBA team. And if you have to go into the play in and play a one and done Mm -hmm. and the odds that you're not playing your best brand, the odds is you're not going too far. Yeah. And I'm looking at that saying, I don't want this team to be that. We definitely don't want that, and uh, it certainly didn't feel like it was going to be this way for a while, but that's where things are at right now. The Lakers have actually overtaken the Kings in the standing, at least in the win column. They have it in the loss column, but they won yesterday. They're 45 and 33. The Kings are 44 and 33. So as we give you an update in the Western Conference standings right now, and again, there are games going on right now, Dallas and Houston in a good one. Right now in Big D, the Rockets, <laughs> oh, yeah. Rockets up to with the ball with 25 seconds left. We'll see if the Rockets can pull off that upset. But as of right now, the Mavs in the five spot, 47 and 30. Clippers are also in action in a close one against the Cavs. They're 49 and 28. Then you've got the Suns, 46 and 31. They play the Pelicans tonight, 45 and 32. You got the Lake Show at 45 and 33. Kings, 44 and 33 as they get set to take on the Nets. And the Warriors also in action tonight. Uh, they're at 42 and 35. It's tight, isn't it? It is tight <laughs> as can be. It is tight as can be. And of course, you always have to throw a little insult to injury. We know about the Kings injuries, but the, the insult after the loss on Friday, the dreaded two minute report. Oh, came it, wasn't, out. it wasn't even the question. <laughs> you knew it was coming the minute you saw it. Oh, yeah. Uh, but the league came out and said they they blew the call and that uh, Colby Jones was was fouled with 1.9 seconds to go and it would yeah. put him at the line for two free throws to, to win the game. I mean, can you imagine that? You put a rookie, you put a rookie mm-hmm. on the free throw line to win the game in this type of magnitude. I would love to see how that played out. Now, the way the Kings have been shooting free throws, maybe that would have been a better scenario. No, no, no. Hold on, no. hold on, hold on. Kobe, Jay, Kobe Jones ain't a part of that. that that's what I'm saying. That, yeah. That's why it might have been a better part for the right. Kings to have Kobe Jones at the line in that situation. No doubt, because uh, from from what I know, Kobe Jones is playing big time down in the G League. No doubt. And, and the Stockton Kings, we should mention, have a playoff game tonight as well. Right, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, you know, I would have liked to seen how that would have played out. I'm with yeah. you. I was rolling on that one. Yeah. But speaking of free throws, and we can we can bark about uh, the non-call all we want. It's not going to change anything. Right. Uh, but, you know, numbers don't lie. And the, the Kings, again, were 7 of 13 from the line on Friday. And you lose by one. And, and Delmas was, uh, let's see here, 4 of 7. Barnes, 2 of 4. Fox, 1 of 2. And you lose by one. one. See, yeah. that's the thing, uh, uh, Scott. And, you know, we point out these things and people are like, you know, well, what's going on now? Uh, mm-hmm. That's been going on the whole season. Yeah. You know, it's things that have been going on the whole season to where us as analysts, we point it out. And, you know, and a lot of people, a lot of fans be like, we know what, why are you guys talking about that? Because we knew back then five months ago that this problem was going to rear its ugly head again, especially when it comes down to crunch time and you need to win basketball games. We talked about this in the first two months yep. of the King season. We did. And the Kings have been in the cellar of teams with free throw shooting percentage in the league for most of the season now. And, you know, Scott, we bring up this point. You know, not not just to put this team down, not at all, no, not at no. all. But we bring up this point to say, you know, we know the Kings 
have a very dominant offensive game. All right. We know the Kings can get up and down. They can score with the best of them. They can win basketball games. But we're talking about down in crunch time now. And we're talking about moving on to postseason play yeah. to where just your offense can't get it done. Nope. You have to find other ways. Got to get some free points. You have to find other ways. And the free throw line is another way to where you can utilize and win games. And we're talking, Scott, one point games. We're talking about one possession games. Yep. To where the free throwing line can definitely make the difference, and the Kings are struggling in that scenario. No question. Now, what were you? What was going through your mind when we saw that incredible comeback and uh, Missoula? We knew he wasn't going to bring back his star. No, at that no, point, no, nothing no, no, going no on. But what? What was in your mindset? I mean, you had to be thinking, "Oh my God, the Kings are going to get the biggest break all season long right now." You know, when Joe went to the to to, to the bench. And, and and you and I, we talked about this. Mm -hmm. We talked about the mindset of where. Uh, They're done. The, They've got everything yeah, they want. Where the Celtics was going to be. And I told you, he's probably going to play the starter some. Mm -hmm. But then he's going to put put, put the, put the uh, subs in and let them play. Yep. He has nothing to lose. Yep. I mean, even in that scenario, Scott, for him and the tutelage of letting his reserves play out a game to where you have a last second shot, that play right there was so valuable to his uh, reserves yeah. that you know what you'll give up a win just to give those guys that type of experience but i knew the kings were going to make a push i knew that they were going to come back when the reserves came in rightfully so there was no reason why they shouldn't if the kings didn't make a push against the reserves i would be having a whole different conversation right now no question all right our look back friday night uh brought to you by Folsom lake honda your one-stop honda shop of course we always take a look at the points in the paint brought to you by RT painting again, the Kings under 40 points in the paint again, only 36 on Friday Celtics only had 38, but they're, they're a big time three point shooting team. Although I will say the Kings outshot them uh, at the three point line. They put up 51 threes on Friday night. The Celtics only had 44, but again, lack of points in the paint for the Kings. It's been standing out of late. Sabonis. So Another double-double, 60 straight, 73 on the year. As mm -hmm. we were talking about beforehand and just kind of having our conversation before we went on the air, it's a history-breaking year for Sabonis. You can make a case it's the greatest year in Sacramento Kings history. It Obviously, is. rivaling, you know, what Chris Webber did. And by the way, C. Webb's going to be in town next week. That's going to be great. He's got a new book coming out. Looking forward to talking about all of that. But saying that about Sabonis, you know, um, 60 straight double doubles is phenomenal. No doubt. No shade whatsoever. At all. But we would also admit that just a double double by itself does not mean you had a good individual game. In today's game, no. Because BB, because for one, it's so easy to score the basketball. Pretty much everybody could score. And number two, you know, like I said, the scoring is up. So when scoring is up, the assist play is up. Now, I'm not saying what he does is easy. No way, no, no how. I mean, the, the, the dude comes out and gives it 150%. Yeah. I salute him every night he For walks sure. off the Nobody floor. Nobody works harder than Exactly. I salute him every night he walks off the floor. Yeah. But the thing about it is that, you know, it's kind of like winning the scoring title, but you don't make it to the playoffs. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you, you played well, but the team didn't do what they needed to do to equal the expectation. Yeah, no doubt. It was 16-6-6 six and six for Sabonis on Friday night as the Kings lose the first two games on the road trip. Uh, Madison Square Garden on Thursday to the Knicks Boston on Friday. Uh, today, it's a Brooklyn team that's on a back-to-back. -back. They're out of the playoffs. They Somehow, they came back and beat Detroit after being down. But obviously, this is as close to a must-win for Sacramento as you can have. Game night's underway when we come back. Uh, we'll get to your phone calls. You can give us a call 339-1140. We'll break down the game today. We'll get you the outcome. There is a final almost in Dallas. We'll give you that score. Clippers game has gone final also. We'll talk about that and a lot more. Our look back at the points in the paint again, brought to you by RT Painting, your reliable and trusted painter in the Sacramento market since 1998. Game night's underway live from the Sacktown Sports 1140 studios here on a Sunday afternoon. Back with more after this. All right, all right. We are live on YouTube today. Kyle, how are you, my friend? I am doing pretty good. Yeah, you're you're the only person in America that I know of uh, who was ready <laughs> for South Carolina today to beat Iowa. That I don't. I would not go so far as to say that, but yes, I'm a, I'm a big Don Staley. You fan always root for the Carolina. team that is. 
I mean, they weren't the underdog, but you always root for the team that others aren't. I sure. I guess that's I, just who I, you are. I like to go against the grain, right? Me and my my Kansas City yes, fandom, my San Diego Padres. Yeah, everything. Yes, you do. You you get it. Yeah, all um, right. Great yeah. game today, by the way, too. Also, nice uh, shirt. I know thank some you. people were commenting on it in the chat oh, too. Thank you. A little birthday gift. So yeah, it was nice. Looks good. Yeah. I, it takes you back. That's nostalgic right yeah, there. Yeah, now the 100 year look back. Yeah, I love the colors. It is. Thank you. Thank you. Light the beam sweatshirt can't go wrong there in the Sacktown Sports sweatshirt. So we, we can't even be agitated with you this afternoon. No. Kyle. I did, and I did not bring in my, uh, what would Brooklyn be? New York Yankees? If you had worn a Brooklyn Dodgers hat, I would not have been upset with you today. I, where can you even get Brooklyn Dodger? Oh, I have a Brooklyn anymore? Dodger hat. You have a, was that back uh, when you were a child? Oh, they make they them were... now with the B on them. They're yeah. just as popular as the. Dodger hats. I, hat. no, I yeah, thought absolutely. that was when you were a child going to Ebbets Field. I was know? not a child going to <laughs> Ebbets Field. <laughs> Don't make me come through the glass. Scott, I, I had make... a birthday, but I didn't turn 97. Thank you. Is that with the 100 on the patch says? <laughs> yeah, it's, your yeah, it's my birthday. birthday. You whippersnapper. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> That's why Kyle. the patch says 100. It's a good it. thing we're in two different rooms. All right, what do we got going on in our chat? Uh, well, first of all, some people are excited about the Stockton Kings tonight. Oh, yeah, I am too. Yeah, they're 6 o'clock. They play in the, the yes. G League semifinal. That's a, that's a big game tonight. Um, is is this a best of three series now, or is it just one game? It's one game, today? I believe, until they get to the finals. Okay, so and tonight's it's a one three game. game. Yes, I believe that's correct. One game, winner, go home. They're playing in Stockton today. Yes. Uh, also, some people were asking about tiebreakers, so just real quick to run yes. through the tiebreaker scenarios from this point for the Kings. Okay. So. Kings will win a tiebreaker against the Warriors, yes. which at this point, given the breakdown of the schedule, the Warriors are all but locked into number 10 at this point. At the 70 some odd percent chance. Did he just hit that shot? Oh, oh my man. God. Dante Exum Dante, just, oh. just went Kings on the Rockets there with a three pointer to send that game to overtime at 129 all. That was incredible. Okay. So yeah, they're going to go to overtime there. Um, so Warriors, they uh they they won the tiebreaker against the Warriors. Yeah, they'll win the tiebreaker against the Lakers. So if they win, they'll temporarily be back in the eight until the Lakers play later today against, I believe, Minnesota. They've got the Timberwolves. That's no gimme. No, it's not. And I know the Timberwolves haven't been playing as well no, as no, they late, haven't. But we'll see what happens there. So they they win the tiebreaker over the Lakers no matter what. They lose the tiebreaker against the Pelicans, and then the Suns tiebreaker will come down to whoever wins on friday when phoenix comes to sacramento whoever wins wins the season tiebreaker they're two games behind phoenix right now but phoenix has a, a gauntlet schedule to end the season sure they do so we'll see what happens there that just clears up all the tiebreaker scenarios for yep. everyone i appreciate that that's helpful okay good deal uh yeah that was an amazing shot and, and henry i i, I blame Emi Udoka on that. How do you not foul in that situation? How are you not wrapping up somebody up three under five seconds to go? It's the classic case again of just allowing a shooter to do his thing. Right. You know, and and especially when Luca got the ball, Luca got the ball mm -hmm. on the move. Yep. I would have fouled him immediately. Absolutely. Right there. You have to foul. You have to foul. Yes. The clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for you around people and pets when used as directed. Zebo, people friendly, bug deadly. Welcome back to the game night right here, Sacktown Sports, eleven forty. Scott Marshall on with the high flyer Henry Turner. Game night brought to you by National Garage Door. Call today for your basketball special nine one six six three eight forty five fifty four. It is going down in Dallas right now. Dante Exum, we saw him do it against the Kings. He did it even on a bigger shot against the Rockets. A three ball at the buzzer to tie it. The Rockets and the Mavs are going overtime, as we were saying in our chat during the break, Henry. How in the world, if you're Emi Udoka, you're not telling your team to foul? They had plenty of time. They plenty missed a free foul. throw to go up two possessions. Yes. And Dallas got the rebound. Go, go it, back. They did what? Missed a free throw. There it is. Missed a free throw that would have put them up four. And there it is right there. You talk about how simplistic this game could be, Scott. Yes. Missed a free throw. Even with the missed free throw, though, total winning position, Dallas must not have had a timeout because they, well, it, they must not have had a timeout in regulation. They didn't take it. Advanced the ball into the front court. Houston had multiple opportunities to foul Luca or to foul Exum. Didn't do it. Exum on the right angle. Buries a 25-footer on a great look. And now Houston has to play five more minutes. Yes. 
with Dallas with the momentum. That's the problem. Exactly. They're at home. They have the momentum, yeah. and they're ready to go. That's the tough part. And like I said, Scott, we've been talking about the simplicity of trying yeah. to win basketball games, doing other things. That right there was the typical, prototypical reason why you say you have to make your free throw. You have to make your free throws. And again, if you buy analytics, which I do for the most part, certainly at end of game scenarios, if you look at anything that's under seven seconds in a game and you look at the chances to win on fouling, if you're up three versus uh, uh, not fouling, it's like eight times greater. You're going to win if you foul because the chances of somebody making a free throw perfectly missing a second one, rebounding it and putting it back up and in are much, much less than somebody hitting an open three, which is somewhere between 35 and 40%. And you know what, Scott, I, uh, my mentality has totally changed about that because before back in the day, I used to say, play it out. Mm -hmm. You, you, you defend until the end, but in today's game with how everybody is knocking exactly. down that three point shot, you can't let guys take that shot. Absolutely not. They will kill you. Yep. And that uh, certainly put a, a frown on Clippers fans. The Clippers winning today, they beat the Cavs. And the Cavs right now are certainly uh, not playing good basketball at all. They've only won three of their last 10. They lost to the Lakers yesterday. Lose to the Clippers today in LA. So the Clippers are 49 and 28. The Mavs 47 and 30. But new found life here in overtime. We'll keep you updated on that one. As we continue along here on game night, it's the Kings and the Nets. Um, we'll talk about Brooklyn. Obviously, it's a team struggling. They're out of the playoffs. They're playing on a back-to-back. -back. Kings with a golden opportunity here. And, you know, again, a must win. The definition is you must, your season's over with. So I don't like saying it's a must win, but it's as close to a must win for the Kings as there is. You know, Scott, uh, I, I've been feeling that way for the last two months for this basketball <laughs> team. You know, I've been saying that they needed all the wins they possibly can yeah. to, you know, really reach their goal. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 it is what it is right now. The Sacramento Kings know they have to win basketball games. And if they want to even just slide in and be in the play in and try to make it to the playoffs, they have to be playing a better brand of basketball. They got to right the ship. Yep. No, they definitely do. All right. Uh, let's go through the playoff scenarios because obviously that uh, is what it's all coming down to right now. We do know the Kings have, have um, secured a play in spot. So if there's any slight good news, that is that we're not going to be putting up a, a play in banner, a golden one center. We understand that, but at least they're in, the play in, but they could still finish anywhere from seven through 10 in that. Uh, as we said, the Suns and Pelicans play tonight. That is a monster game. Suns 46 and 31, two games up in the loss column of the Kings, but the Kings could get the tiebreaker with a win on uh, Friday night. And they could even get the tiebreaker without winning against Phoenix on Friday night because they would have an e even split 2 2 in the Kings in terms of the conference record. Uh, I think would be up on Phoenix in that scenario as well. The Kings have a lot of tiebreakers in that regard. Uh, Pelicans are one game up in the loss column of the Kings at 45 and 32. They're sliding right now. Uh, they're going to play tonight without Zion again in the game against Phoenix. They could come in potentially next week with an even or less than uh, a worse record against Sacramento. And, and the tiebreaker, which the Pelicans have, may not even matter against Sacramento. Yeah, I mean, it's still top topsy turvy for this team. Uh, I mean, for for me, Scott, I'm 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 just so bummed because I really wanted this team to take control of their own destiny. I honestly thought that this team was a top team, you know, and and I still feel that way. I still feel that way if they had, you know, all of their guys at their disposal and they're playing King style basketball. The Sacramento Kings are top sixteen. Yeah, and they still got a chance to get into the top six here. I mean, you know, absolutely, if they went out, they're going to be a top six team, just looking at the math. Uh, and then they could potentially match up against OKC, which they've had good success against. So, I mean, that's on the the, the best case scenario. You know, and, and I'm fine with that, Scott. I'm, I'm definitely fine with that. I don't care who the Kings match up with when it comes down to the playoffs. You don't want them to match up against Denver. I wouldn't care. Just get okay. there. Okay. Just get there. Yeah, sure. First and foremost. Right. Absolutely. 
that that's extremely true. So obviously a lot of things to, to play out here. We'll see how it all breaks down. Uh, Mike Brown trying to keep things a little bit looser today in the, in the team shoot around, there was video sent out and he was out on the floor throwing passes between his legs and warm ups and stuff like that. So he's still trying to keep things you know, relaxed. Hey, coach Brown, whatever it takes, whatever you feel you need to do, because really Scott, that's a huge part of a head coach's job is the motivation factor, mm -hmm. keeping your guys engaged, keeping your guys believing in the task at hand. So, you know, however you have to do it, if you had to get out there and play the flute, <laughs> uh, do whatever it is you need to do to keep these guys engaged and keep them ready to play. No doubt. And the Kings need to pick me up right now. Right. Oh, no doubt. I mean, because we're sitting here talking, no doom doubt. And gloom, right. But you're a player. You can't be in that mode. No, you know, I mean, that's the thing that I hate saying, Scott. I'm not. I'm not talking doom and gloom. I'm speaking reality. What's, exactly. What's right there in front of us and what needs to happen. So you know, I want this basketball team to win. I do. I, I want them oh, to go course. as we far as they possibly can. Yeah. But I'm just putting out there exactly what's going on. No doubt. I mean, we got to keep it real for sure. But as you said, as a as a, a coach, as much as anything else, you've got to be a master motivator. You got to be a psychologist. You got to be there in the right times when you know your team needs a little pick me up after a, a loss, like on Friday night in Boston, coming off the loss on Thursday in New York. You got to be all of, all of that, all of that, because you don't want these guys to have that feeling. I'm pretty sure, just like I see what's happening, what's going on, the players see also, of course course they do all right when we come back we're going to go around the league we'll take a look at the other games going on we'll update you on what's going on in dallas in overtimes the mavs they sent it to overtime on that buzzer beating three by dante exum can they pull it out in the extra five minutes we'll let you know on that one uh, game night being brought to you by the big brothers and big sisters of sacramento if you have a heart of service you want to do something good in our community helping out a kid who needs an outside mentor well not many causes better than that. That's what Big Brothers and Big Sisters is all about. They match kids with mentors from the outside. Uh, give this fine organization a call, 916-646-9300, or visit bbbs-sac.org to learn all about becoming a volunteer mentor. They're not asking for your money. They're asking for your, something more important, your time. Back with game night after this, Sacktown Sports 1140. Uh, we are live. Uh, let me check something real quick because something's coming in here that okay. said, let me just test something real quick. All right, we should be good. We should be good. Should? There just, yeah, there was just a weird thing that was showing up on the board. We're good. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just, I turned all your microphones off to make sure. We know what should have and would have are. Yes. I just, I just needed to turn off all your mics real quick to okay. make sure it was all right. All right, okay. we're good. Okay. Okay. So. Dallas, P.J. Washington just hit a three. Yes, he did. He, and he is balling right now for Dallas. Big time. Yeah. I, I thought, got the game winner the other night in their win and now coming up. Huge. I thought that trade was the worst of the deadline because I was like, Grant Williams. I mean, Grant Williams was a bad fit in Dallas and they had issues and that's why they got rid of him. But I was like, Grant Williams is a better player than P.J. Washington. No, he's not. They attached a what are you talking about, Kyle? No, I absolutely. No, was, he's not. He's not. I thought you're wrong. At the time, you're I'm wrong. Like, you were wrong then, and you're wrong, more wrong and PJ, now. PJ's turning out to be great for them. He was good before. So, the point I was going to say to that is Dallas is going to be. The point is, you're wrong. All right. No, go ahead and finish your point. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm being, I'm being a, a little harassing. So I da apologize. So, so Dallas is going to be the five. Henry's still looking at <laughs> Henry me. Henry like agrees I'm crazy. with me. He's Look, just, he's being polite Grant, about it. Uh, uh, anyways. Maybe I watched too much playoff <laughs> basketball, not enough PJ. Go ahead, um, make your point. So Dallas is going to be the five now at the end of this. They would have to beat the Clippers twice, and the Clippers would have to drop another game for them to catch the Clippers. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Dallas is going to be the five. Clippers are going to be the four here. And that now puts it in the scenario of who are we rooting for in Pelicans and Suns? Because this is a real tough scenario. That's the question which, I asked. Which I, one do we want? I, I personally, at this point, am rooting for the Suns because I think the Pelicans are the team that is sliding the most. Oh. Mavs just hit yep, another three. Go. That's a ball game. They're up nine now. Yeah. So no, not the Mavs. Mavs didn't hit nothing. Oh. P.J. Washington <laughs> just knocked down two from the corner. P.J. Washington, third. Oh, Luca's yelling. <laughs> third best player on, the, on a number five team. Yeah. Uh, I... 
I was putting disrespect on PJ Washington. Hey, you put you, you dis- must not hey. have been in the um, arena when PJ went for forty two against us. But I think that was during the the COVID bubble too. So I would understand that. Yes. Oh, how about the next year when he walked in and still dropped down big time numbers? Uh, he's Every just, time he walks in the G one, him, him and Colby White, if they were paired together, would be eighty two and zero against the Kings. Why was he on the bench on a terrible Hornets team? I just hey, I have always said we talked about that, Scott. Yeah. I said I would love to have PJ Washington Absolutely. here in Sacramento. I would have traded for him immediately, no doubt. Yeah, and so at this point, it kind of <laughs> to the to the Phoenix and Pelicans point, like it's it's kind of interesting to see where you pick it. Cause like the better chance of catching someone is catching the Pelicans, but that means you're guaranteed to be in the seven, eight at this point. If you're going against, if you're rooting for Phoenix, that gives you a better chance of jumping Phoenix because all you have to do is beat Phoenix and win the rest of your, you know, they can afford one loss to OKC, but if they go four and one and beat Phoenix, they'll jump Phoenix in the standings most likely. So it's just, it's a tough game to figure out of which one, do you root for Wait, Phoenix point? has the tiebreaker over New Orleans. Phoenix ha- currently has, uh, yes, Phoenix has the tiebreaker yes. over New Orleans. Yes, but they do. Phoenix, Phoenix and the Kings are two two right now. So the fifth no, they're game, not. They're two one. No, they're two two on the season because oh. it'll it's the fifth game. Oh, you're right. You're absolutely right. I apologize. It, it is coming up for the fifth game. On yes. The, yeah, so Friday, no matter who right. wins that game, wins the tiebreaker. Yes. So yes, the, you, you just got to hope Phoenix drops one of these tough games the rest of the way too. That's true. And that twenty two point loss looms large from Phoenix. Yes, exactly. Yes, All right, coming back. Okay. RTPainting.com. RT Painting, your trusted and reliable painting contractor of choice. Welcome back in the game night right here. Sacktown Sports, 1140 Scott Marshall on with the high flyer, Henry Turner. Game night being brought to you by Power Business Technology. Experience how the power of family can help your business office equipment needs today. Contact them at 844-POWER-BZ or go to powercopiers.com. Well, as we suspected, Dallas writing that big three from Dante Exum to send the game to overtime. Steamrolled the Rockets. 145, 136. They're interviewing Kyrie Irving, but they should be interviewing PJ Washington, who laid it on the Rockets in that overtime. Him or Dante Exum, either or. But I understand why they're interviewing Kyrie Irving. If you look at Kyrie Irving's numbers in the overtime, he took over. He went and scored almost every bucket besides those two that PJ Washington knocked down. That's the thing. That's the beauty, Scott, yeah. of having a guy that can take over when you need it. A guy that can go one-on-one, get a basket. You don't have to run a play for him. You don't have to screen. Give him the ball and get out the way. He's going to get you something. No doubt. So the Mavs survived. They go to 48-30. and 30. They're a game and a half behind the Clippers. You know, it feels like the Clips and Mavs are kind of locked into the 4-5. Not entirely because the Suns. And technically, the Pelicans could still catch Dallas. But let's just say it's Clips and Mavs first round series. Who do you like in that series? Clippers and Mavericks? Yeah, a healthy Kawhi, assuming, right? That's going to be the big thing, Scott, is where is Kawhi Leonard? Yeah. If he's healthy, ooh, I'm, I'm, I have to go with the Clippers. Wow. If he's not, then they're a whole different team. Agree. Now, they did beat Denver, and it's a regular season win. Understand that. They did beat Denver at home without Kawhi. Um, but I feel like Dallas is the team that's rolling right now. They've won 10 of 11. They're playing great ball. They are. Like I said, they're right where you want your team to be. Yeah. Boy, it'd be a great series. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I would pay for it. Yeah, it'd be a great, great series. All right, let's go around the league. We'll focus in on Kings and Nets in our final segment. Uh, let's see here. The Hall of Fame class was announced uh, as part of the – NC2A weekend. By the way, we haven't mentioned, uh, but uh, the women's final uh, is a final in South Carolina defeats Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. An incredible year for Iowa, an an incredible career for Caitlin Clark, Mm -hmm. obviously Mm -hmm. captivating the nation, uh, the best player, male or female in the country this year. But South Carolina completes a perfect season, 38-0, and goes back to back national championship back to i mean put a little bit more on that scott back to back back to back and undefeated undefeated. yes i don't know too many teams have done that if 
ever. UConn's like the last one, I believe. That went back to back and undefeated. Kyle, go ahead. You can. Sorry, South Carolina's won two championships in the last three years. No, but I'm oh, saying. that's right. They didn't win last year. I'm sorry, because Iowa beat okay. them last yeah, year. Kyle's so correct. 20, 2022, correct. South Carolina, 2023, LSU, they, They've been the four finals in a row, yes. and they've won two of the four. And that un, is correct. And undefeated. Yes, that's, and they did it with five new starters this year. That 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 is a huge fade, and, 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 and these, these, Don, salute you, baby. Whatever you're doing down there, keep doing it because you got a great brand of basketball. One of five coaches now, all time to have three uh, national championships. So she's in the pantheon of Gino Ariema, Tara Vanderviller, Pat Summit. I and, mean, and, and how many years? She's just starting. Yeah, I'd have to look at the total number of years there, but I, I would guess if I had to, it's around a decade, but not she, entirely. She's sure been there that. ten years now. I think so, but I went. I would not hold myself to it. Fifteen years. She's been there fifteen, 15 years. Fifteen years. Wow. Yeah. Hey, well, she's got it right. She's got it right. She's uh, one of the best players ever, now one of the best coaches ever. So congratulations. And, of course, Caitlin Clark, uh, an incredible season. And I'll just say this. Anybody who thinks that her legacy is tarnished at all by not winning a championship, I just can't go there. You know what, Sc Scooter? There's been a lot of talk about that, too. I, I will say this. In today's era, I think Sky is the limit for this young lady yes you know uh we don't know right now i mean she's so high she can't get any higher right now her last games were viewed more than oh, nba finals most, most watched yes right Absolutely. so everybody knows that wherever this young lady goes mm -hmm. it's going to be a huge paycheck yep a huge paycheck and i wouldn't be surprised at any entity that would kick in and say we want her, especially just for the views only. Can you imagine if she could draft into the NBA? No question. What she got an offer for the big three, what for five mil? Oh, Ice Cube is smart. Yeah. Oh, because, absolutely. Maybe because five mil is nothing compared to what he's going to get in TV revenue if she would sign in the big three. No question. No question. The sky is the limit for her and incredible. All right. Let's get back to our NBA conversation here. Uh, the Hall of Fame announcements. That's kind of how we got sidetracked with uh, the, the college game, but uh, Vince Carter in the 2024 Hall of Fame class. First ballot Hall of Famer? I roll with it. Yep. I roll with it. He deserved it. Oh, I, I roll with it. All, all, all the years, the miles he put in for the NBA, you know, not even talking about being a human highlight film. VC, I'm with it. He got my vote. No doubt. Uh, obviously, a, a no-brainer there. Chauncey Billups also into the Hall of Fame. Big shot. Okay. Yep. So he's there as well. Uh, those were the two lead candidates in the 2024 Hall of Fame class. We'll acknowledge that right there. Uh, let's get to the games that are going on today. We're all scoreboard watching, of course. Uh, we know the big Western Conference games are later tonight. You've got the T-Wolves and the Lakers. Uh, LA, again, has just entirely flipped their season. They've put this thing together. They're on a big-time win streak right now. The Lakers, in their last 10 games, have won nine. They've won four straight, and they are peaking at the right time. And you know what, Scott? Speaking of the Lakers, we got to give just due Michael Cooper. Into the Hall of Fame as well. Right, Thank you very much. right. The great point two guard, Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper. Hey, Cooper Lou. Cooper Lou. You know, one of, one of the greatest guards, truly defender, two-way players, one of the best in the business. And when we talk about greatest six men of all time. Michael, Michael right Cooper there, right? is right in there, no yeah, doubt. Yeah. You know, but yeah, LA is playing, man. I mean, they're finding their way. I honestly thought that they were done, but whenever you have a LeBron and you ever have a guy like an AD, it, it, it makes it easy, Scott, when you're trying to turn things around because those guys can be leaders and those guys should almost get it done by themselves. I have always said the Lakers are going to be as good as LeBron is engaged. Long as LeBron stays engaged, they will have a chance. Yep. Uh, Jazz taking on the Warriors. We know Utah is just slumping their way to the finish. So you would expect Golden State to take care of business at home. Uh, Golden State most likely is going to be the 10 seed regardless of what they do. I mean, they could still mathematically move up, but it's going to be tough for them to do that. As we said, the Clips have beat the Cavs 121-18. The Mavericks defeating the Rockets 147-136 was the final in that game. Looking at some of the other 
uh, games on the Eastern side, Pacers and Heat. And that's a big game in terms of uh, Eastern Conference things. Right now, Indiana is leading Miami 79 to 68. As we look at the Eastern Conference standings right now, the Pacers are in the sixth spot, 44 and 34. The Heat are 43 mm. and 34. This is a huge game. Mm, tight, tight, very tight. But you know what, Scott? Let me go on record for saying this. We're saying that the Utah Jazz is just straight tanking, straight giving up. I will say this. I'm going to go on record. Okay. I think the Utah Jazz is trying to do the exact same thing OKC did. They got a bunch of young players yeah. out there that they're throwing out trying to cultivate those guys, get those guys, show them how to play NBA basketball. They got so many first-round draft picks that they can pick from. Yep. They're going to be the team that's going to bounce back next year and be playing big-time ball. Well, it's also resulted in 11 straight losses. Oh, no. They're letting young guys <laughs> play. No, no. Uh, they understand this year is going to be what it's going to be. But they're cultivating talent, Scott. They got good players on that team. They're letting the young guys play, and they're going to get a couple of draft picks. I bet you they won't be at the bottom next year. Yeah, and they started off decent this year, and, and their big decision, they decided to keep Laurie Markin in, right? A lot of people were talking they were going to trade him before the deadline. Obviously, they have a franchise cornerstone piece to build around. That's right, and like I said, they have at least – Four to five first round. Oh, they do. They, 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 I mean, they, they Danny got, Ainge is right. going to make some great picks. They're going to build okay. that basketball All team, right. and they're not going to be on the bottom for long. All right, I'll buy that. Uh, let's see. Orlando, who's fighting for Eastern Conference playoff position right now. They're up 33 to 18. The Magic are currently in the four spot, but they're tied with New York. Uh, they're beating the Bulls, who are in the play-in. Uh, right now, it's early on in that game. The Raptors and the Wizards. This is a game for fighting for the <laughs> <laughs> last seed in a lottery situation. Raptors blowing out the Wiz right now, 42-19. Uh, Hornets and Thunder, OKC winning in Charlotte right now, 37-33. OKC, of course, will be the opponent for the Kings on Tuesday night. They still have a shot to get the top overall seed as they've got five games left to go here. That, that, that game right there, Scott, is kind of like – a mirror game of what we just talked about with uh, with Boston. Where is OKC mind going to be with this game as far as going forward? Are they really trying to push to get that number one seed, or are they fine at that number two looking down the road and saying, okay, at two, who are we going to match up with? Yeah. That's the scenario that those number one, two, and three are in when you start looking at, okay, do we really want to beat Sacramento? Uh, let's see who we will match up if, you know, where, where will we be? Because, like I said, a lot of good teams that's playing good basketball is down there at the bottom. You know, do you want to match up with the Lakers? Yep. All right. Do you want to see the Golden State Warriors playing good basketball? The, those two guys, the, those two teams, as, as bad as it, as it is to say, okay, they're at the bottom, they're at the play-in, they throw in a huge wrench at those teams at the top when you start looking at, okay, who you want to face first round, these guys playing good basketball? Do you want to face a LeBron James playing great basketball and he's totally engaged? No, you do not. Not really. No, you do not. And more importantly than everything else is full health. And right. With Shea Gill just still not completely healthy. He's not playing in this game tonight. So, um, you know, that's as much as anything for OKC. It doesn't matter who they're matched up with if, if SGA isn't ready to go, obviously. Right. So uh, let's see here. Any other games? The Suns and Pelicans are underway now. Second quarter, Phoenix leading 36-24. And again, Zion Williamson's not playing second game since hurting his finger. We know Brandon Ingram is out as well. So the Pelicans are a team that's sliding right now, and they've got injury problems. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, at this particular point, to be sliding is rough. It's tough. You know, because we just talked about it. You want to be playing at your best at this particular point. And then when you're undermanned and you're not playing your best basketball, that's a double whammy. It is. That, that That's kind of like where we are. But you still have to go out and try to find a way to turn this thing around. So, you know, the Pelicans, the Kings, we're looking at each other and saying, hey, we look just like you guys. No doubt. We've got our own injury problems. Right. You deal with your own. All right. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will look at Kings and Nets second and final meeting between these two teams. Uh, Kings winners, 131-118 back in December. This game means a lot for Sacramento. They've got to get this one tonight. So we'll come back. We'll get you the injury report and all you need to know about it. This is game night right here. Sacktown Sports, 1140.
All right, all right. We are live on YouTube. All right, Kyle. What's what's going on on your side? Of uh, so Phoenix is up thirty six twenty eight right yes. now, which is hell's on a four zero run. You know. So, yep. We'll see what happens. Uh, this is just something funny that I saw. So in the first quarter of the Washington Toronto game, at one yes. point Toronto was down by twenty eight points i'm sorry toronto was up, up by 20 yeah they're up 42 19 the against score washington I saw, right? okay. which is just i think really funny because it's so hard to go down by 28 points yeah. in like 10 minutes because they, yes. they were down 28 and then washington went on like a 7-0 run to end the quarter which is yep. really hard to do <laughs> that is hard to do but they are playing the whiz yes but even for a team as futile as the wizards it is it yep. is super hard it to is have that happen all right what else is going on in our chat room some people are still excited for Stockton tonight. Yes, that's a big uh, one. Yeah. Do I see Deuce over there as well? Deuce is right there. Deuce yes. isn't on the call tonight. Is that game uh, televised it's, tonight? It's on ESPNU. ESPNU tonight. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So uh, people can check that out. I think both of them are. Like the Eastern final is at four and okay. the West one is at six. And we clarify it's a one game playoff still at I this point. I believe so. Thumbs up on that, Deuce. Yeah. One awesome. game winner go okay. home and cool. the best of three in the final. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. Nope. That would be great to see stocked in advance. Yeah. I'll tell you what, those games are a lot of fun. And I don't know uh, how many people who are in our chat have had a chance to get down there, but it's a great arena. And obviously the, the Kings have had a lot of success. So. Yes. And the other side of it, I know you guys will talk about the injury report in a second, but it looks like Brooklyn is more shorthanded than we were anticipating. Yes. Well, they had a couple of questionables. So what have you found out? Obviously they've, they've put out their report we're within an hour yeah. of game time. Do, do I have to uh, do the, the sponsored thing now, or do we wait till we're back on air? Uh, we can do it now and then we can do okay. it back again. So the ones we, we knew Dennis Smith's been upgraded the probable the ones uh most interesting nick claxton and dennis schroeder so schroeder i believe is going to play okay. and claxton is out okay all right so so no claxton no we know the other ones because they've been listed no as out yeah no DFS. cam johnson yeah yeah we'll get all so the rest no, of those no claxton expected to play which at this point can you name five players on the brooklyn nets who are going to be playing tonight that's kind of the game at this point with them because uh has it, it's been a tough year for them and I don't know. I don't know what their draft pick situation is this year. I should have looked that up beforehand, but it's just altogether been tough for Brooklyn. No, it, it has been. And uh, obviously they've in the last couple of years, Henry have just been trying to find themselves again. Obviously they had the big three, they're all gone now and they're in complete rebuild. You know, when, when, when Brooklyn tried to make that huge splash, uh, they sold the house, the barn, and all the, and, and, and all the land, Scott. So right now, they have to recoup. And, you know, re recouping years are tough. It's hard. So this is what they're going through. They're going to have to really revamp that basketball team and start all over from the bottom. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening in uh, – Pelicans just came back to In time. Brooklyn right now. We got 10 seconds, but Pelicans just tied the game up. Interesting. What's the score? 36-36. Wow, 12-0 run. There you go. All right. Taxes and other charges extra. After promo, regular rate supply. Actual speeds vary. Welcome back in the game night right here. Sacktown Sports 1140. Scott Marshall along with the high flyer Henry Turner. It's our final segment. Coming up, Kings Live pregame. That'll be on the air here at 4 o'clock. Jason Ross in for that along with the high flyer. G-Man with the call. 430 tip. And boy, you know, the one thing I love about the Kings trips to New York. What's the that? thing that makes me probably as happy as a Kings win is seeing G Man have so much fun back there. He oh, loves man. Broadway. Yes. He loves his food. Uh -huh. Like he is just, it is great to see him having such a great time. You know time. what? And, and, and he really gets it going. And, and I, I think, you know, he loves being in Boston also. You know, he, yeah. he, he talks about the restaurants in Boston a lot. And, you know, he has his favorite places he loves to stop. And, you know, it's almost like, you know, where's Waldo? It's like, exactly. where's G-Man at right now? No question. I know he took in a twin bill of a couple of plays. I believe he saw the Michael Jackson play that's on Broadway. Nice. Yeah. So making the most of the moment, nice Italian restaurant, all the good stuff, all the things you should do when you're in Manhattan. You know what? I'm going to tell you what. Before G-Man give it up, he go ahead and take me to New York with him because I want to go to some of those fine Italian restaurants. You know me, Il Pali Italiano Perfecto. Hey, hey. So I want to have some of that great 
home cooked Italian meal. You and me both. I want to be part of that entourage. All right, let's get to the injury report for tonight's contest. It's brought to you by the Arnold Law Firm, providing you justice since 1975. If you're injured, call the Arnold Law Firm, 916-777-7777. We know for the Kings, no Kevin Herter, no Malik Monk. There was some good news at least put out Thursday about Malik Monk. He had spoke um, to the B, and I believe he had spoke to the TNT people before that game too, that Mm -hmm. uh, his – knee was doing better than expected whatever that means we know he's not coming back for the regular season but hopefully if the kings can get into the playoffs maybe malik might be back sooner than later so that would be good news. you know scott that that, that's one of those things to where if you malik monk there's no way you come back unless you're 100 i understand the magnitude for this team sure but you have to be a hundred percent because he's the, in a free agent year. The worst possible that. thing yeah. that he can do is try to come back too early and re-aggravate that knee. No doubt. And it's a wrap. So, you know, take his time, rehabilitate, get it right. You know, but I understand where he comes from from a player's side. Sure. Because okay, we know he's not going to come back regular season. Yeah. But if the Kings make it, go through that play in and they're in the playoffs, oh, I'm like Malik Monk. Even if it's at 80, I'm like, oh, no, no. It's 100. I'm ready to go. No doubt. And especially Malik Monk. Right. Because his heart, his passion, second and none. It reminds you. You remember back when Bobby Jackson was coming back from injury an era ago, right? Right. It was almost in the same situation with Bobby Jackson. And there's not a more fierce competitor than Bobby Jackson dying to get out there. But he had to get healthy, too. Right. And see, that's the main thing. Like I said, Scott, even if you're just at 80%, and yeah. the Kings are going in that first round. You're like, man, this is my team. These are my yeah. brothers out there fighting. Yeah. Uh, Doc, I'm at a hundred. I'm at a hundred. <laughs> yeah. No, it's yeah. Well, obviously, if if the Kings get in that situation, we'll we'll see how it all shakes out. But it's just good news that things are going better than expected. Right. We'll you know, it, you know we'll what? Take it for what it is at the moment. For right, exactly. You know, we're, we're happy for the league, bro. Take your time, but hey, you know what? Get well. Absolutely. All right. For the Nets, uh, Dennis Smith, who didn't play last night has been upgraded to probable he should play tonight. Nick Claxton, who was questionable, is out for tonight. So their big man gone. Dennis Schroeder, who was also questionable with the Achilles, is going to go tonight. We do know that Dorian Finney-Smith is out. No Cam Johnson. uh, No Keon Johnson. And no Ben Simmons, who's been out for most of the season with that back. And we don't have enough time to get into the whole Ben Simmons situation, how it relates to Brooklyn. And the couple of minutes here, uh, obviously, the Kings, a great opportunity. This is their best chance to get a win on this road trip. We know they desperately need it. You know, right now, I'm hoping that the Kings just get back to where they need to be. You know, get a win, start feeling good because it's going to be tough, man. The Kings have to be playing Kings basketball. The Kings can't be walking into a playing situation thinking about, okay, uh, who are we again and uh, how are we supposed to play? No, you got to come in knowing exactly how how you're going to execute and what you need to do. No doubt. And I think we we talked about your your big guys have to be fantastic. Well, Fox was fantastic on Friday. He he had 40, uh, you know, put the Kings on his back. You have to get everybody else contributing around. Him. You know, Scott, I alluded to that earlier. I said, you know, De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis are still doing what they have to do. But it's tough when you're trying to win five on two. Nine times out of ten, that's not going to happen. It's not a great recipe for success in the NBA. All right, that's going to do it for game night. We appreciate you listening. Coming up next, it's going to be Kings Live pregame. Jason Ross is here. He's ready to go with the high flyer. They'll break all you need down in this upcoming game in the next 30 minutes. G-Man with the call tonight. 4.30 tip in Brooklyn over the Barclay Center. 